Hi, this is Dr. Brandon Champ from Algoma University, and today I'm going to give a brief demonstration on how to take bivariate data from a spreadsheet, in this case Microsoft Excel, uh, place it in uh, a statistics program, in this case SPSS, and test for normality the dependent variable, and then conduct a regression analysis to test whether the relationship between these two variables is uh, linear and has a, sl a non-zero slope, so is either uh, increasing or decreasing, uh, statistically speaking. Okay, so uh, what I've got here is data on the number of species per plot in a vegetation uh, community and the biomass per plot, um, in this case, uh, of, of the same plot. Okay, so I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is copy these data, for which there are 60 data points, and then I'm going to open SPSS, uh, and if you haven't used SPSS, it looks a lot like a spreadsheet program by design, and it has two views, data view and variable view. So under data view, you can paste these data in, and then under variable view, you can go and add names, SP richness for this one, and biomass for this one. The only other thing I need to change on this is to identify what kinds of measures these are. So these are statistically uh, continuous uh, variables. Um, measurement variables, and then I can return to uh, the data view. Now, the next thing I have to do before conducting the linear regression is test whether the dependent variable, in this case biomass, um, is uh, conforms to sort of uh, a sample from uh, what would be a normal a normal distribution. So, whether it, it approximates a normal distribution. So, what I can do to test that is under Analyze, go to Descriptive Statistics, Explore enter biomass as the dependent variable. Under plots, make sure normality plots with tests is selected. And then click OK. Now, under this, uh, under this output file, you want to go immediately to the tests of normality. And you'll see that both tests here, it conducts two, and there are several, um, show that the data um, the p -val have p-values of less than 0 0.05. Now that sounds good at first. You think, oh wow, that must mean they're significantly normal, but in fact, uh, counterintuitively, it means the opposite. So these are statistically uh, non-normal, which means I have to do something before conducting uh, the, uh, the uh, data analysis or the linear regression, which is transform the data. Now, there are a number of ways that you can transform the data. You can go back to Microsoft Excel and, and uh, do some sort of data transformation. But you can also transform the data here. So as you can see, I'm going to select Transform, Compute Variable. In this case, um, I happen to already know uh, what, what transformation uh, will lead to normality, uh, just for efficiency. I've already checked. And in this case, a power transformation um, that allows me to use the square root function here. Um, so a, a square root is basically a power function or to raising uh, biomass to the power of one half. Um, so in this case, square root of biomass. Okay, and then I can simply select OK. I, I, I named a new variable uh, associated with that. Now you can do a variety of different uh, uh, transforms here, but this one will work just fine. Um, and basically a new variable pops up here identified by the name that you outlined and with the, the data of interest. Now if I, I reselect this and check normality again under, again, descriptive statistics and explore, um, I'm going to remove the old one and I'll put in square root biomass. Make sure it's still selected, normality, okay, and then click. Now if I head down to tests of normality, in both cases, uh, you can see that uh, the, the p-value or the significance value is greater than 0 0.05, and that's desirable in this case, so I can proceed from there. Okay, so the next step then would be to conduct the linear regression, and under Analyze, you'll see it's a fairly simple thing to do. Regression is right here, linear regression is right here. Okay. So in this case, our dependent variable is now the transformed variable of biomass, and species richness is the independent variable. Okay, And then from there, I can simply press OK. Now, uh, a variety of statistics, descriptive and otherwise, pop up when you do this. 
Um, ultimately, though, um, we don't need to ex examine the correlations between the variables, um, but you can head down to um, these three in particular. Um, but both both uh, the ANOVA and coefficients test uh, will illustrate that the uh, regression is significant uh, and significantly positive. If you look at the beta, um, the slopes uh, unstandardized or standardized, the slopes are both positive. Okay, so that indicates that um, uh, plots with more species richness have significantly higher biomass values in this particular habitat. All right, uh, and then of course the p-value is less than 0 0.05, so it's considered significant. And the r squared value here, whether you use adjusted or or the class uh, the the standard uh, the unstandardized r square is 0 0.206, which means that uh, about 20.6 percent of the variation in biomass ex is explained by variation in species richness. So uh, species richness doesn't explain all the variation in that, but it does explain significantly some of the variation in that. Uh, and that's how you perform uh, a linear regression in, uh, in SPSS using data that I've taken from Microsoft Excel.